Hi, this is Dan Lexi from Dan Schultz Outdoors, reminding you to keep the adventures alive. Hey y'all, I'm Johnny. And I'm Colleen. And, and we're, we're the Keel Quest. And, and we, we want, want you to keep, to keep the, the adventures, adventures alive. alive. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, this is Darren from Ride Paddle Repeat, encouraging you to keep the adventures alive. This is David from Beastly Ironworks saying keep the adventures alive. Hi, I'm Dan Mayot. Keep the adventures alive. Hi, I'm Kevin Collin, the happy camper. Remember, keep the adventures alive. Awesome! Shug here. Keep the adventures alive. I am. Ethan here, the avid outdoorsy guy, reminding you to keep the adventures alive. We're John and Aaron. Keep the adventures alive. Hey everyone, it's Kylan from Lure of the North, and I encourage you to keep the adventures alive. This is Sky North telling you keep the adventures alive and now on with the show hey happy tuesday evening everybody and welcome back to another episode of canoe hounds outdoor adventure show a show that brings you a lot closer to the great outdoors uh, my name is dennis also known as canoe hound and we have got a great show lined up for you tonight uh with a special guest uh from another paddling uh youtube channel and uh, we're going to be learning a lot more about what he has to offer and uh, what his uh, channel is all about and a lot of things that he has going on. Anyways, uh, if you're new to the live stream, thanks very much for tuning in tonight. Uh, we are live here every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, make sure you put that on your calendars and we hope to see you uh, every Tuesday evening, right? Um, before we do get on with tonight's guest, I just want to let the uh, chat over there get populated. So I'm going to have a, uh, a few announcements here, uh, like I do every week. Uh, so if uh, you know the, the routine, it might be a good time to grab yourself a beverage and uh, get yourself relaxed in. I'd like to start out by uh, acknowledging my uh, my channel sponsors. Uh, uh, the show tonight is brought to you by our good friends over at Algonquin Outfitters, uh, who celebrated 60 years in business last year. They're into their 61st year now. A uh, great place to go get yourself some gear if you're heading into Algonquin Park. Uh, you know what? They have three locations situated almost directly within the park, three within the park, and no, two within the park and two just on the outskirts. Uh, great place to get uh, some gear and some knowledge for sure. Uh, also brought to you by our kid, our friends over at Kid Products, makers of the Kid Twig Stove and Reflector Oven. And now they have a few new goodies that they, uh, they're they offering as well, including a titanium pot. They've got uh, titanium spoons coming up on the thing. Go check them out at www.kihdproducts.com and uh, see what they have to offer. Uh, our good friends over at Hunter and Harris Paddles, I say it every week, I uh, have a great Hunter and Harris Paddle, not one but two, and uh, you know what? 
crafted hand, works of art uh, made from cherry wood. Milan does a fantastic job, and you know what? I can honestly say that uh, I love mine, and I can't wait to, wait to get them back into the water. Uh, I'm long overdue, just like all of us. Uh, we all want to get out there and get our paddles uh, into the water and start uh, doing a little bit of backcountry camping maybe, right? So uh, let's hope for the soft water season really soon. Also, uh, tonight's show is brought to you by, you can tell, our good friends over at Novacraft Canoes. Uh, we will be giving away some Novacraft swag tonight, so stick around until the 8 o'clock hour at least uh, when we will be giving away. Uh, so we got some mugs and we got some hats and things like that, but uh, we're going to have two prize packages we'll be giving away this week. Much thanks to our friends over at uh, Novacraft Canoes. And if you do not paddle a Novacraft canoe, you might want to consider checking them out. Uh, fantastic vessels. Uh, you know, great quality, long lasting, and uh, I'd say price right. Anyways, we're going to get uh, get to that in a little bit. All of these links can be found in the description down below. Feel free to check out my sponsors. Uh, they help out the show. And uh, you know what? It's always a good thing to uh, shop where you can, when you can. On last week's show, we were joined by Pete Beck from the YouTube channel River Kings. Well, Pete Beck and his uh, good buddy, Brian Hubbard. And we talked about River Kings, and uh, yes, it was a kayak show. And don't forget, Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show is not just about canoes, but we try to cover all kinds of outdoor uh, adventure stuff, including kayaking and other things that I want to get into as well. So by all means, uh, if you missed last week's show with uh, with Pete and Brian, go back into the uh, my playlist. Uh, there's a lightning bolt down here in the description, down around there. And uh, you know what? You can check it out. You can go back there and find any of my past episodes. There's uh, 94 episodes that are in the past. We're closing in on the number 100, hopefully in March sometime. And uh, by all means, get caught up. There's a lot of great, a uh, lot of great shows, a lot of great topics, and a lot of great guests. So by all means, go uh, go check that out. Uh, congratulations for last week's swag winner, who was Tim McDaniel's. Uh, your prize is in the mail. And your information has been shared with uh, the boys over at River Kings so that they can fulfill their end of your, your prizing as well. Really quick, uh, new member shout out, uh, Alan Beerhoff. Thank you very much for becoming a channel member last week. If you haven't already done so, drop me an email so I can get your perks started. I'd like to get your, uh, your membership uh, sticker out and stuff like that. And then uh, we're able to keep in contact with each other if I have that information. So drop me an email with your uh, mailing address. We'll get that off to you. And for anybody that might be interested in helping to support the channel, there's many different ways you could do it. Buy me a coffee. You can uh, become a channel member. Uh, or you can just simply watch my videos, start to finish, leave me a comment, and a, a big check mark. Uh, that would be great. Uh, let's see here. What else have we got? Uh, Dude, not a whole heck of a lot. Just want to say thanks. Look at that. We got uh, we got uh, Motion Bushwala is uh, is just dropped the super chat. Thank you very much. I haven't got my chat going here. There we go. Motion, thank 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 you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, it really helps go a long way to helping to support the channels. You're all right in my books. Uh, not only because of the super chat, but because you're all right in my books. Right. Uh, let's see here. Did it do? We're almost to this. Uh, I lost place here. Oh, for more information on upcoming shows here in the future, please check out our Facebook page at Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show. And uh, you'll be able to stay in tune with exactly what's going on with the show, who's going to be on as guests, and things like that. Uh, I shared little tidbits of information on there as well. So by all means, please do check that out. And um, follow me. Give me a follow over there. And if you have any hot topics or guests that you'd like to see on the show, it's always very helpful to know these things. You can drop me an email at canoehound at gmail.com. Let me know who you'd like to see on the show or what you'd like to see on the show, and I will do my darndest to try and make that happen. Uh, and then one last thing, and I always say this, is our show is interactive, and I would really like it if uh, you could participate. So by all means, drop your questions in the chat over there, but put the word question in front of your question so I can more easily recognize it. By doing so, uh, I will put a, I'll, I'll start on my end, and I'll try and get it on throughout the show here. If I miss it, feel free to post again, or even better still, after the 8 o'clock hour and after we do our swag giveaway, I'll put the invite out there so that you can actually come up and ask a question of our guest and please join us on screen. Uh, love to see you. Uh, love to have your participation. And uh, with that being said, let's get on with tonight's topic. Uh -huh. Where are we here? I'm a little ahead of myself. 
Uh, tonight we're joined by a former world champion whitewater kayaker. I guess you know what you can't say former because he'll always have been a world world champion, right? Uh, he's also the author of twelve books and videos about paddling, and now he's the host of the popular YouTube channel Paddle TV. He's also the producer and host of Facing Waves, North America's only paddling focused TV series. Please welcome to the live stream tonight, Ken Whiting. How are you doing tonight, Ken? Very good. Thanks for having me, yeah. Dennis. Oh, you know what? Thanks for joining, man. Uh, you know what? I'm a big fan of your channel um, because it has paddling. Well, thank you. <laughs> Is that why it took the 94th episode to have me? Yeah. Well, <laughs> 94 yeah. episodes. You That's know what? a it, lot uh, of episodes. There, there's a lot of topic and a lot of people out there. And you know what? I'm trying to get through. I'm trying to get through, man. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. If I had known it was 94, I probably would have lobbied to be number 100. But <laughs> there you go. I, you know what? I haven't got a clue what I'm doing for my 100th. I might do like a kind of reunion type of thing. What do you think? Yeah. Any any ideas? That's not a bad idea. Yeah. 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 You got like it. I've made a lot of YouTube friends doing this. Well, show, I'm happy so to be it's, here. Uh, it's pretty cool to call on a few favors and say, hey, come on and join me for my 100th, right? So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, man, tell, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, I, I I know the Ken Whiting I see on Paddling TV all the time. Uh, you're a, a, a world champion whitewater kayaker. Let, let's get into early Ken Whiting, before the kayaking yeah. championships and stuff. How would you get your start in this whole paddling thing? Uh, how I got started? Well, I took a friend convinced me out of the blue to take a kayaking course whitewater kayaking course at wilderness tours um on the auto river it's like the it was at the time it was, it's the main uh, rafting company the biggest rafting company and they had at the time they had the biggest kayak school and um and i've just i took it and uh, the next company i was one of in a, i was 14 when i took the company a 15 year old kid living with a lot of river guides about at about 150 river guides like that at the time it was a dangerous environment for <laughs> a 15 year old kid to be in mm -hmm. and there was about 15 of us and we didn't get paid we just did dishes we did uh clean picked up cigarette butts cleaned out houses did all that stuff from six in the morning to three in the afternoon and then we got we had a place at the top of the river and we just got to every day seven days a week paddle from three o'clock onward till till whatever. And so uh, it was an amazing uh, way to just kickstart uh, a paddling career. And then the rest was, uh, yeah, I was hooked. I was, you know, I just got more and more sucked into the world of, of whitewater. At the time it was whitewater, but uh, it's funny when you, you hear and you introduce me as a kayaker, I, I don't really think of myself as a kayaker anymore. It, it's amazing how things have changed. Like I'm a, I feel like I'm a paddler, you know, because when I was for the first 10 years of my life and not 10 years of my life, but 10 years of my paddling life, uh, right. between the ages of 14, 24 ish for me, I was a whitewater paddler, a whitewater kayaker. And I looked at anybody doing anything else. I looked at sea kayakers. I looked at people that canoed. I looked at them all and said, why on earth are you doing that? You know, I was, I was, I had the blinders on. I was, this is what I saw as the only thing in the world. And then it just reached a point where, I, you know, I, I, I was, you know, I, I had done it a lot and I started exploring different things. And, and that's when the world opened up to me. And I was like, hold on. Wow. Sea kayaking is, is actually really cool. Canoeing is really cool. Every different piece of, or, or aspect of paddling was, was, uh, I realized how cool it was in its own way. And um, ever since then, you know, I don't really, yeah, I don't call myself a kayaker. I call myself a paddler. Right. Right. That, yeah. Sorry. You're, you're breaking up a little bit here. I don't know if your internet connection on your end is a little, a little shoddy, but uh, hopefully that'll clear up. But uh, I caught the whole thing. I caught the whole thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah. So you, you kind of like, you know, work, working uh, as a young person there, and being able to paddle every day, that's kind of like every paddler's dream to be able to paddle every single day. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It was, uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was an opportunity that was really pretty unique and, um, you know, it definitely set the path for my whole life. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, quite quite obviously, because now you're 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 pretty much in the full business of of paddling. Uh, not only with with paddle TV, but you also have a a uh, video production business that actually focuses a lot on the outdoor stuff and a lot of it to do with paddling, which is uh, your, your show called Facing Waves, right? Which is on television. Yep. Uh, different areas. We'll we'll get into that shortly. But uh, yeah, so it, it stemmed a whole, basically a whole career. What what a what a great way to make a living, eh? Doing something that you yeah. really really enjoy. Yeah, so, no. I, I wish I wish I could do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're on to something, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, hmm. time time to reevaluate my <laughs> my life's direction. No, no my, I'm happy with my life. I'm happy with my life. So now all, all this led up. Now, so you, you say you don't consider yourself just a, a kayaker, but you consider yourself a paddler, but. How did it come about that uh, you started getting into competitive paddling in order to become a world champion whitewater kayaker? Well, that was pretty natural. Uh, it was, uh, I was just getting really good <laughs> at kayaking, paddling as much as I did. And the Ottawa River is very much a, uh, a haven for freestyle kayaking. And mm -hmm. um and I just started, I was started traveling and started entering competitions and realizing that, hey, you know, I actually can do pretty well here. And, and, uh, and then I was fortunate enough to be, uh, be, become part of Team Perception back in the days, which was, I, I'll never forget that moment when Bob McDonough, who was the designer of, of uh, some classic boats like the, uh, the Pirouettes, perception pirouette series the overflow the super sport and you know he's a classic boat designer incredible guy mm -hmm. he um anyway he you know put his arm around me and said want to be part of team perception and it was like <laughs> like yeah of course wow and uh and that kind of uh, fed the competitive fire and um and yeah and then i ended up actually yeah, and I, there's so many, you know, interesting times in well everyone's life, but but in uh, you know when I look back in my paddling life, times that really sent my life in a different direction. And one was, was when I was, uh, was uh, a raft guide in out uh, out west in the Rockies, living in Banff in a house with eight other raft guides lived just living on the floor and and then we we went to a competition the canadian team trials and ended up winning and the world championships were in uh germany that year this was in 90 this would have been 95 i guess anyway i had no intention of going to germany uh for the world championships i would never you know i just wasn't on my radar but all you know, that time of year of my life, I didn't have the money either to just mm -hmm. drop, ra ra stop raft guiding and go, go on a trip. So I, uh, but the guys all pooled my, uh, friends and, and my roommates all pooled money together and, and said, you gotta go. And, um, you can't give this, let this opportunity go by. And, and so I went and I ended up doing really well. And, uh, I think I ended up 12th that year and it just, I was like, okay, hold on a second. I can, I, I can, I can do what the best are doing, or I'm close. I can figure that out, and mm -hmm. uh, and that took me off on really down the competitive road, and I really pushed for the next three or four years hard. That's cool. So opportunity come and knocking, pretty much, right? Based on based on your skill set. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's cool. And, and that, yeah. that that you know that's a pretty heartfelt thing that you're you know. The guys you paddle with or your fellow competitors actually seen the the the, the potential as well saying no you got to do this and to do yeah that, awesome. oh it was i mean that's the the incredible thing about the the paddling industry and just paddling in general is the friends you know that's yeah the the, the friendships those are my uh closest friends still are not just those friends but all the friends that have come from the outdoor industry is you know we just share that that same connection and um even the raft actually the owner of of the the raft company he contributed the probably the healthiest portion towards me even though he was going to be down a guide he was like you got to go <laughs> wow, that's was, awesome. yeah really uh really cool 
Okay. So now the, the competitions, run, run me through it. Is it uh, the same type I've seen on TV where, you know, you got the hanging gates and stuff and you're, no. is, that, is that the type of whitewater or? No, it, it's uh, freestyle. It, you really in kayaking, you have freestyle and you have slalom. Right. And slalom, it, it's just like skiing. You've got freestyle and then you have slalom or, you know, all the different, all the different gate related race, uh, ski racing. Um, and the slalom is the Olympic sport whereas the freestyle is is freestyle is what's been changing pushing the sport to new levels it's mm -hmm. it's where uh it's those uh, developments that have pushed the, the you know the the extreme end of kayaking as well well the extreme in terms of running crazy waterfalls but also the extreme of um doing aerial moves all the the, the cool stuff that people are doing on waves so it really is waves Mm -hmm. Cool. Sorry, still breaking up there. <laughs> um, okay, so now when, no. when you uh, basically when you uh, were gone to the world championships, what what year did you actually become a world champion? Uh, that was ninety seven. Ninety seven. Let's not count. Let's not count. Okay, uh... no, we're not counting though. <laughs> That's okay. You know what? You look like you could yeah. have won it in like 2012 or something, right? So, yeah. Oh, there you go. I appreciate that. There you go. Uh, <laughs> well, I got the so lighting I, just right so you can't see all the gray. Yeah. <laughs> and and where, where, where were the world championships held that you uh, that you actually won? Those are that year was on the Ottawa. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, in the oh so you had a whole field yeah. advantage. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. And then... Um, uh, it was, was really cool is my wife, my girlfriend at the time, but now my wife, uh, she won, uh, at the same time. Okay. So yeah. that, that was, that, that was amazing. I got to watch her win before my finals ride. And that, that was huge for me actually, because it just took an enormous amount of pressure off me because I was like, Oh God, well, one of us won. So yeah, yeah. You know, it yeah. just, I, I was nervous for her. I mean, very, I had a lot of pent up energy, just watching and nerves, just watching her. And then once she won, I was like, and then uh, I, you know, it really let me give her. <laughs> yeah. You had to keep up with the Joneses at that point. Right. Yeah. I had that too. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So we, we were talking in the green room and you said that like, because you kind of live near the Ottawa river uh, that, uh, you know, you're, your whole base is around there business wise and work wise and obviously family wise. Cause you met your wife, you said, uh, uh, through paddling as well. Yeah. The Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, it's, uh, yeah, we're, this place has been, uh, the Ottawa Valley has definitely played, uh, an enormous role in my life. It's yeah. It's where not only where I call home, but it's where, yeah, I, where the family I've met my my wife it's where the majority of my friends are and they all went their own ways and now they've a lot of them have come back and we are all established and uh, and you know our have our families here and it's it's really cool and now our kids are the ones who are ripping it up like that's right. most of the whitewater paddling i do these days is with my daughter she's uh, 11 now and just turned 11 and um i mean she's surfing waves she's uh she's figuring out her flat spins she's yeah and she just you know got a bomber roll this year and it's just awesome i there's nothing i enjoy more than going out and that's watching cool. her learn yeah for sure that's that's cool uh let, let me ask do you, do you have any video footage uh available on your youtube channel or any of your websites from back in the championship days or you know what i don't i don't think i do too bad. Yeah. That, that would have been such a great keepsake, too. Right? I'm sure. I, I I know I have it on. Uh, gosh, what would that be like? High eight. High eight super VHS, something like yeah, that. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, some some mini DV, but uh, I haven't gone to the the trouble yet to convert it. See, you you didn't date yourself saying back in '97. You just dated yourself by saying "Hi eight. And I dated myself <laughs> by saying "Super VHS." <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's it. We're done. No. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, that was my first video. My first video was a VHS video. 
Yeah, yeah it's yeah. funny actually. I just someone was asking about it, and about a month ago, I pulled it out. First yeah. time I'd seen that VHS, a VHS video in ages. And I was like, wow, now that is a keepsake right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know what? It's funny. My, my wife and I went to the father-in-law's house the other night. And we had to help him do a couple things, right? Elder, elderly, elderly gentleman. And my wife comes walking out with a bag that had a VCR in it. Anybody remember a v, what a VCR is? <laughs> And it's because we've got all these old Disney movies that my wife wants to show to my grandson, right? But we don't have a, a VHS or a VCR anymore, right? So it's like, yeah, yeah. Supposedly and it what, works. What does a what does a VCR plug into your TV with? Is it like oh, the you, RCA cable? The right <laughs> okay, we're we're dating ourselves, man. <laughs> okay, back on to the regularly scheduled program. Um, I had a quick question here from. Uh, uh, Mosin Bujuala is asking, Ken, do you offer whitewater instruction in the Ottawa area? No, I don't currently. I have, I used to teach here so much. And, uh, and then I, I haven't really been doing a lot of what physical teaching. I've been doing my teaching more through nearly all through Paddle TV, through the YouTube channel. But uh, I have been toying with the idea of, doing some more teaching what i want what i did back in gosh uh, it was it would have been in early 2000s because i i had a a uh, what i call the what was it the free boat tour and i would travel around north america and i had was going to competitions anyway and i would go and um hook up with the different the kayak schools that are all over the place and would run specialty clinics with them and i I do often think back to that and and go, gosh, one of these days I'm going to have to do that again because mm -hmm. I miss it. Yeah. The neat thing is, is you're, well, in light of even with COVID and stuff like that, but you, you do a lot of traveling with this still, right? So. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah, actually. Yeah. I still do. Not as nearly as much as I used to. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, no, I still, I love, I love travel. I love exploring. Uh, new rivers, new waterways. Um, and so, yeah, I'll, I still got some travel. I've, I've got a chunk of travel coming up probably about four to six weeks on the road in March, April to go really just on paddling adventures and testing a ton of kayaks. And mm -hmm. so I'll be heading and leaving the snowy North and finding some greener places. Right. Right. <laughs> And, and that, that's one of the perks and benefits of doing what you're doing as well. You're getting to test out some pretty awesome gear. Uh, yeah. 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 And I actually have a, a Facing Waves, the, the TV sh show shoot in which uh, in BVI's British Virgin Islands coming up in a month, which, um, yes, yeah. crisps my arm. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you need a, a, uh, a gas? I've got a waiting list. Or... I've got like, I've got a list of people who have asked that same question. <laughs> So uh, I'll put you on that list. <laughs> I'll be your stunt double or something. Yeah. Right? I'll, I'll take a fall for you. Uh, there, okay. um, yeah. And you mentioned that you're, you're maybe heading down towards uh, the American South uh, Southeast there. Maybe run into uh, Pete down there from River Kings. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully yeah, we'll Pete, connect. Pete's in the chat there. I see. Uh, I see Pete in the chat there. Oh, yeah. I'm coming your way, Pete. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, you got you guys will probably make a pretty good dynamic duel out there. I've seen uh, some of his whitewater stuff. That's that's yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So I really I, gotta try. I really gotta give that stuff a try. I've been I've been having a lot of fun watching his watching uh, the River King stuff because his where he goes. I spent uh, I lived in Asheville, North Carolina, for about a year, and I, that's another story altogether. I worked. Uh, well, Bob McDonough, the, the guy who was uh, who brought me on to Team Perception, um, he left Perception shortly after I'd won the Worlds, and he went and joined a company that no longer a kayak company that doesn't exist anymore called Savage. And he he basically said, "Ken, let's go, let's uh, get this thing going." And so we went to Asheville, North Carolina, and uh, threw ourselves into getting Savage off the ground again. But uh, long story, I won't get into it, but that only, uh, we, we g gave up, threw in the towel after about nine months 
for a variety of reasons. But uh, anyway, it was, if nothing else, it was an incredible opportunity to explore the waterways around uh, around the Southeast, North, North Carolina in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, didn't realize that there's uh, as many paddling opportunities as there are until I talked to the boys last week, right? So, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I guess all the way down through the U.S. would be, you know, rivers, creeks, streams, so whatever. Yeah, that's cool. So you're 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 a pretty busy boy with Paddle TV. Uh, you're also the president of Halconia. Tell, tell us about Halconia. What is it? Uh it's a production media company, a production company, and it's it's a we produce. Uh, outdoor adventure and adventure travel content and uh we've got a variety of media projects everything from uh um backpacking kayak fishing and fishing um adventure travel uh we've got a, a show called adventure cities which is about the world's top uh, cities of adventure gateways to adventure uh the backpacking one is epic trails the world's top backpacking destinations facing waves is the one that i host and the world's top paddling destinations and uh anyway it's we we once we've we kind of it's happened very organically we uh i with uh, i have a business partner now and he's been but he well he's worked i've worked with him for about 18 years but he's been my business partner for about 10 years and brendan and i with our team we kind of figured out this model for these media projects and once we figured it out we're like oh, okay we can do this in other similar outdoor industries other industries industries we're interested in and and we started doing it and so it's grown um it's grown a lot it takes a lot of my time but it hasn't you know it's you know we still live in beachburg in a mm -hmm. town of uh a thousand <laughs> yeah, yeah. but your your reach with that with the with the videos you're you're putting out there you're you're reaching quite a wide audience right you're like you're I, I seen you got stuff on Disney, National Geographic, uh, uh, amongst another. What else we got? Bally Sports, Outdoor Television, uh, PBS Sports Channel. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's they've got a, a enormous reach through TV, and then um, and and you know, we're really working on the digital side right now, and that's actually part of what Paddle TV was uh, for me. It was. For me, it was getting back to paddling. I kind of, you know, stopped doing it as much and the business was pulling me away from it and not pulling me away from paddling, but time, pulling my time away. And then, it, you know, I reached a point where it's like, you know what? We live here because lifestyle is so important to us. And so I can't let the business hijack what's important to me to completely hijack what's important to me. So um, it was a good excuse. So I want to figure out YouTube uh, yeah. and I want to paddle and get out to spend more time outside than in the office. So let's do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, And, and, and it's uh, working out well for you. I think you got your, you're over like 80,000, well over 80,000 subscribers, 88,000. And this is your, you, you say your platform to be able to share all things paddling. Right, not just the yeah. kayaking and stuff like that. Uh, your canoeing, your stand-up paddle boarding, uh, gear reviews, all these other things. Um, what is that? Where the concept come from? Is like not with Halconia. That's made for television. This is made for not for television, right? Yeah, exactly. The TV yeah. is more uh, has the focus there has been more inspiration because it you push that out to people and you, and you can inspire them to get into kayaking, whereas mm -hmm. Uh, in the digital world, you really have to rely on people finding you more. And um, so that's part of it. But also, I've always, I mean, m my pr media projects from the very beginning have been, I mean, I was an instructor from the very beginning. I was teaching kayaking when I was 16. It's in my mm -hmm. DNA teaching. I love it. I just, I love teaching, you know, and, uh, you know, it's like fishing. Even, even when I'm fishing, I like watching someone catch a fish you know, pretty much as much as catching the fish of myself. I love seeing that their success. And so uh, for me, um, doing instructional and in, in providing valuable information and teaching people is just, I love it. And the fact that I get to do it outdoors, go spend a lot of time outdoors and testing different, all sorts of different projects. It's, 
it's pretty awesome. <laughs> to be yeah, honest. yeah. yeah. Well, like it's, it's like that, that dream job, right? Yeah. It is. And and if yeah. you'd asked me, uh, you know, again, 10, 15 years ago, because a lot of the gear I'm I'm testing is not cutting edge. It's a lot of entry level um, paddling gear. Uh, but, it, you know, and part of me wants to test and do more cutting edge um test cutting edge gear and and push the, the paddling a bit more but i am just really love loving testing every type of gear like my eyes got opened up so much this past year by things like the portable kayaks out there and mm -hmm. portable boats how much they've uh well they've really improved dramatically and you know they're they've they open up the world of paddling to so many people that really can't deal with boats they don't have the storage space they don't can't transport them so and i you know i always thought his uh, that uh, portable kayaks were or portable boats of any nature were kind of junk but they're not you know and you know I, that's just one element that uh, it's been a really great learning experience for me too for the past year and a half all right so with the evolution of, of paddle sports, um, whether it's kayaking or canoeing or stand up paddleboard, how, how, what have you noticed some of the biggest changes are in the, the evolution of like, you know, stuff from say back when you won your world championship compared to what's out there on the market now? Well, it, when I was really in the thick of whitewater, whitewater was going through an enormous growth stage where the equipment was just changing every every year at a dramatic level too, dramatic changes. And that's kind of, that's definitely slowed down. The changes aren't dramatic, as dramatic there. Um, but what, you know, when I, when I was at that age, it, there's, I was doing, trying new things and pushing with my buddies. We were trying all sorts of things. We didn't, we had, didn't have these pre, preconceived notions of what was possible in these boats and what wasn't mm -hmm. and so we were figuring out new stuff that had never been done before and and now when i watch it's, it's still that that's a never-ending journey the next generation is doing the exact same thing right now like i watch what some of the the young generation is doing now and it blows my mind They're like mm -hmm. wow okay yeah. that's cool <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never thought that would i never even thought of doing that and you know, I think that on a whitewater, it's more obvious, but I think that's happening in all spaces of paddling, stand up paddling, canoeing, uh, sea kayaking. People are just taking it further and um, and the ref and gear is going through slight refinements to um, to just, well, I mean, to, to let people push it further, but also to make it easier to get in. Mm -hmm. Because I really think that's been the biggest barrier to paddling growing is that equipment hasn't been as friendly um as it could be and when people have their first experience if it's not awesome then there's a good chance you've lost that person for life they might not if you're lucky they may try again down the road a friend might say come on let's go do it again but yeah. you may have just lost them for you know as the industry we may have lost them for good and so uh you know a lot more a lot has been put towards lately creating products that make sure that people's first experience is, is a good one. Right. And, but you know what, even still there's with, with all the new equipment that's out there and stuff like that, you, you really got to be leery as to the equipment you're buying, because a lot of it is junk, just material put out there to flood the market and they, they hype it up, but it's not all, it's not all it's uh, cracked up to be. You know yeah. what I mean? It, it, we'll, we'll say, for instance, some of the, the Amazon stuff that you might find, right? It's just out there to, to turn a dollar. Uh, it's yeah. Not, it's not the good stuff. I've been shopping for a good sleeping pad for winter camping of late and doing all kinds of research, right? And you know what? I fell back on the old tested and true uh, thermo rest, right? Uh, you know, you get yeah. what you pay for. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah and now even in your industry, like with kayaking, uh, even materials from back then to now, you know, it makes things cutting edge, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Jeez, well, what's 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 the cutting edge material now for like in the kayak world? Well, uh, you for playboy for freestyle, it's carbon. But 
carbon kayaks are have to be cust- for the most part custom made and they're they're obviously pretty pricey and so that's it's not a you don't see a lot of them you only see the top paddlers really using them for the most part it's it's the standard rota molded plastic kayaks that uh um that have been around for a long time it take a butt kicking <laughs> and yeah. it'll last a long time yeah there again you get what you pay for type of thing right yeah so, uh i'm just going to take a quick question here from uh from canoe head i like the name canoe head yeah uh how does the Ontario, uh, ottawa river whitewater compared to other areas in north america and the world yeah uh, the it's definitely unique i mean it's a play the ottawa river is a place where it, it's every spring there's a migration of the world's top whitewater paddlers that come here and mm-hmm. because it really is world-class whitewater it's big a big volume and we're talking uh, uh i mean i think it in springtime it's hundred thousand cfs 120 000, 150 000 cfs and you get uh, very few rapids, but they're very prominent rapids with big features. And then in the summer, when the water goes down, it's a much smaller, but some of the best park and play or play features, surf waves you find anywhere. So there's an incredible number of people that come from all over the world t- to experience it. But what we don't have here, it's very, there's not many choices. It's kind of, there's a couple of other rivers around here, but it, that's really it. Whereas a lot of, other areas may not have the single river that is quite, you know, the, the, has the single draw that the Ottawa has, but there's so many more options. Um, creeks, uh, 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 streams, rivers, what have you. So yeah, it's truly unique as a whitewater destination, but uh, but I still, you know, it doesn't have it all. Nowhere, nowhere does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that hence hence the wanting to travel, right? Yeah, you know, trying different stuff. That's cool. Um, let, let's talk a bit about your your canoeing, because uh, like you say, you're more than just a kayaker. You're you're a paddler. Um, do you, how how are you with the uh, canoe tripping? Do you prefer just day paddles? Are you into uh, backcountry exploring? No, I love that's uh, that's my favorite is is multi day trips, uh, exploring new waters. Um, I've uh, you know I've done. A fair bit, a lot in Algonquin Park, mm-hmm. uh, and you know. But lately, actually, and on the rivers in Algonquin, like on the Petawawa, we, I've been, I have a raft, and that's something you don't see in Eastern United, uh, North America, very much. You see a lot in the Western North America, but man, a raft is an amazing tripping. If you don't have the portage, it sucks to portage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, but, yeah. Or Big portage. Clumsy, right? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh it's a it's a great vehicle but a great uh, multi-day vehicle on the rivers if you don't have to um but you know i've done some some of the most some of the most magical trips i've done have, have been canoe trips um i did a 14-day trip up in on the george river up in uh northern quebec that it dumps into the basically the arctic on gava bay mm-hmm. and that was a truly uh remarkable trip um and uh uh but a lot of short ones really in short like the two to five day in algonquin park yeah yeah when you when you get into the backcountry trips now i know you just did one uh not too long ago which was killarney oh Killarney, uh, five or six parts oh i love killarney yeah it's a it's a magical place i I actually prefer killarney over (laughs) yeah Oh, Killarney is one of my favorite places yeah. in the world, hands down. If you haven't been to Killarney, anyone who's watching, put it on your bucket list. It is a magical, magical place. And it's easy. I mean, it's not, it's backcountry, but they, they with, especially with um, Killarney Outfitters right there, they make it easy mm-hmm. to to they've got everything if you forget something they got they got a wicked store but even you don't even have to travel with anything you can just show up there and they'll rent they got high end canoes so you're not lugging these beasts around you're lugging carbon uh canoes around right. and or sea kayaks if you want to go on to Georgian Bay oh uh, Clarney love yeah I'm going back 
every year I'm going back to Clarney. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get a reservation, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the nice thing about Georgian Bay is yeah. Georgian Bay. Um, it, Clarney is totally unique in that you have the, you have the inside the the provincial park which you need reservations for and it's very much a canoe very much a canoe tripping experience but just on the other side of the road is georgian bay and that's crown land and you don't there's no reservations for it you can camp anywhere um and there's a gazillion camp spots out there you, you can't not find a camp spot um it's a bit more exposed it's exposed you have to you know, be aware of weather. You can get caught if you're if you're not careful. But it's great for canoeing and sea kayaking um, as long as you mind the weather. Yeah, yeah. We got uh, people here, at tents and timber, saying totally agree. Killarney is a gorgeous place. Yeah, and hence the reason why it's a provincial park, right? Trying. To I think their their thumb that thumbnail I see is prob looks like it could be a Clarney wall. <laughs> could be. Could be. Um, so when, when you are backcountry camping, do you uh, do you prefer kayak or do you prefer to be in a canoe? To be honest, I've done more canoe uh, yeah. backcountry than than kayaking just because it's more versatile, right. especially where I live. If I was m closer to the coast, it I'd probably flip flop. But the coast is <laughs> ain't, ain't close to the close close to the coast here, yeah. uh, so I wouldn't say I prefer either one. Like. Uh, it really is a totally different experience when you have to portage, when you're going lake to lake, like you are in, in the Clarney Park, Algonquin Park, and uh, then canoes just can't be beat. But when I'm in Georgian Bay, um, uh, I love kayaks. I, you know, I just love the stability, being low to the water, having more control, the wind not messing around with me as much, and uh, just being more confident in rough conditions conditions pick up right um so really i don't i really don't have a a preferred like as then there's rafts you know i love rafts on the right on the right trip like the petawawa river in algonquin or uh we're going to do a raft trip down the demun river um this fall and uh what a great way to you can fit so much stuff in that you can you can fit a lot in a canoe, but you can fit a lot more in a raft. <laughs> right now, is that a solo thing with the raft, or is like? No, what I have is a, it's a fourteen foot um, uh, raft with a center a center mount rig uh, or right. rig. So, or, so I can fit. You know, I could take up to easily four or five of other people in there if I if I wanted to. But usually, it's just me in the raft with all the gear and then you get the people i paddle with they take their own boats and i'm the schlep <laughs> you're the tugboat i'm the donkey <laughs> <laughs> hey guys let's wait for ken he's uh he's lagging behind a little bit <laughs> yeah but i always bring a fishing rod because if, if they have to wait for me because i got their gear so <laughs> yeah. so i'll make sure i take my sweet old time and you're paddling that what like a single blade or a double blade? Uh, the raft. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, two uh, two oars. Okay. Oh, okay. Oar yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That stands the reason. Eh? Uh, I don't know much about rafting either, so it's no. more like a pack raft type of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, no, these are full on rafts, just like you'd take, uh, like they would take clients down on a, on a river. It's a full right. fledged raft. And that's, you don't see it that much. You see it out west, but you don't see it much out east. And so when I do take it down, you know, like into Algonquin Park, I often get people looking at me like I, I have two heads or something. Like, what the heck are you doing with a raft in here? And then, and this has happened a few times, especially on the Petawawa River, um, they'll be portaging their gear. They'll be canoeing and portaging their gear around one of the tougher rapids. And I'll just go right through <laughs> it with a load of everybody's gear. And they're like, Oh, yeah. Now, now they get, get it. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now I get it. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. But like you say, when you do have to portage, it's a real bug. Oh, it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it basically, if, you, if you're doing a backcountry trip, you're going to let kind of, 
you, you let the water talk to you as far as what vessel you're going to bring, right? Like yeah. St. Georgian Bay, kayak, you know, back country, yeah, canoe, uh, you know, river. Well, of course, you're going to use a pack boat or a pack uh, or a raft, sorry, a raft. Yeah. But that's cool. Yeah, 100%. And who's with me? We did a, a sea kayak trip in uh, in Georgian Bay last summer with, I did it with uh, the family, a couple families. And my daughter was in the front of a tandem and that was just the perfect way to 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 get her around um and to be you know just have confidence that that uh i know i'm not going to make her swim <laughs> right 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 <laughs> and we can get creative we can surf some waves we can do you know play around a bit too so it was just the right choice for the the location and the, the people i was with right so any given summer how, how often do you find yourself out on the water paddling oh any type uh, of vessel well, I would say now that I've, you know, started doing more again, thanks to Paddle TV, um, gosh, a lot. I'm, I have to be out uh, at least three days a week. Yeah. Um, yeah, at least at least three days a week through from spring through fall. Okay. And so now I was mentioning your, your Killarney trip. Uh, you had you and your, your buddy, I can't remember his name um uh on killarney that was james james okay but did you also have a crew with you on uh recording that yeah yeah two two of our uh our filmmakers um uh, matt and max um they had their own canoe and were capturing all capturing everything from there so logistically how, how do you plan something like that like was that was that original like, like was that planned to make a, a video for paddle tv or was that planned as a trip to, and then you said you know what this would make a great episode on paddle tv so let's let's work it that way or how, how does that work logistically well that was that it was actually a tv episode okay. um a facing waves uh episode that we uh that was how we i guess justified it i mean yeah, <laughs> yeah whatever that means yeah um but we edited when we edited it we edited it as uh paddle tales episodes first and then afterwards we took those paddle tales episodes and went uh packed it into a uh, into a facing waves episode so it, it seems to be you know it's kind of the way i'm we're doing things moving forward is we're actually shooting more this coming year for paddle tv and then repackaging it for TV. So we're oh, definitely yeah. changing the mindsets. We're doing it for digital uh, release first. Um, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Uh, yeah, because like uh, most YouTubers don't have the luxury of having a crew following them on a yeah. canoe trip or into the back country on a backpacking trip. Usually it's all, you know, Les Stroud style, right? With the camera in front of our own faces type of deal, right? That does does it does it really does it put a hindrance on your trip though? Like, does it make your trip less enjoyable? Do you find? No, no. not at all. Uh, Sometimes, I, I actually, I think it's the opposite. Um, because, like, because I'll sometimes go and just just grab the GoPros and go on a mission, a paddling mm -hmm. mission, and and do it traditional uh, YouTube style and capture a video that way, and. Uh, and I really enjoy that too, but it's, it's an adventure. The paddling adventure is an adventure, but it's also an adventure to try to, to capture all the pieces you need to capture um, mm -hmm. yourself. And so there's more to think about. Whereas when you have a couple of filmmakers doing that thinking, um, literally that was James and I could be more just do our trip and think about the trip. Uh, okay. and then every once in a while we'd have them, we'd have someone say, Hey, stop, go back, do that again. You're like, okay. But you know, it didn't, we're, we're in the park, we're at, you know, having an awesome time. So it, that's, that doesn't bother us at all. Okay. Let's go back and paddle the same awesome section of water again, or walk the same part of the portage trail again. It, it's no, a really, uh, I, you know, and a large part of that has to do with the guys. I mean, yeah. all of our productions, that uh, all the shoots that we do, it's very small. We, I'm not, a, I have no interest into getting into big productions with big teams. I mean, typically speaking, we have two filmmakers 
on a shoot at most. Mm -hmm. So we can just be, and the, the filmmakers are, are active, uh, athletic um, people as well that love being outdoors. And so they're, they're part of the enjoying the experience as much as we are. They're just seeing it in a different way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's one of the neat parts about uh, paddle TV is it's, Aside from most other YouTube content creators where we are shooting it ourselves, it's, it's a different way of looking at it where yours is more of a cut and dry production type of thing. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's almost like it's it's done for TV. And some, some of the really good YouTubers have that ability to make it look like they have a film crew with them. Right. You know what I mean? So that, that's kind of neat that you can actually take people out like that, that actually know what to capture. So like when you go on a trip like that, do you go out with a storyline in mind or is it just take it as it comes? Because when you're yeah. out in the wilderness, it's hard to follow a storyline, right? Yeah, no, we go with a, a, a loose plan, but no, it really, if you get too fixed on any plan on any trip, then um, yeah, I think, I think you have to go with the flow. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the big things that that paddling, river running teaches you is, you know, go with the flow. You can't fight it. And so if something looks better than what you had planned, go that way, go do that other trip. And so we, you know, even when we went on that particular trip, it wasn't until we, we, I had something in my trip in, in mind. And then we sat down with, with Ted East from Clarny Outfitters. And we're like, hey, this is what we have in mind. Uh, and he's like, oh, well, uh, you know what? You should do, we should do that. You should do this. I should drop you off here. And we're like, that looks awesome. Let's do that. <laughs> you know? Sign me up. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And that's that's the part of the adventure for sure. Yeah. So now it, it also had a lot more outreach than just a trip because I know you did, like, uh, this, is, this is our food packing video for it. And you're actually in the, the kitchen or the, or the stocking area at Killarney Outfitters. And um, they were showing all the different meals and how they're preserving meats and stuff like that, you know, vinegar wrapped uh, yeah. cheesecloth and stuff. So that, that, uh, that takes it one step farther than just the trip itself. Right. Yeah. And that wasn't planned actually either. And uh, there's something I'm going to pay attention to more this year because it, based on feedback I've gotten from people, there's a lot of questions about doing trips like this. And uh, those just happened to, you know, as I saw his layout and I just thought to myself, wow, this is really cool how organized you have this. Let's do a bit about it. Um, but it's something I'm going to, I want to do more of because, you know, I know I had those questions and still have those questions and, and people have them. And so, um, yeah, why not well, get more of that content while I'm on, on those paddling mm -hmm. adventures? Yeah, you, you know how many times I hit the, the pause frame on there just to look at all the food and things that he had on the back shelves? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it, it's it's always a great way to, to try and figure out, like, if, if Killarney Outfitters is outfitting people with this kind of thing, you know, you're, you're looking up there and they got the big pump jugs of uh, camp suds and they've yeah. got, uh, you know, the granola bars and the, the Jack Link's jerky and, you know, the, the, the ramen noodles and the whole nine yards, right? Uh, for anybody that's interested, watch, watch go back and do a... Uh, Paddle TV, check out their thing there, uh, the the Killarney food packing video that he's got, and it's uh, you might get some cooking ideas out of it, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're good, they're, they're great. They know what I've got great gear ideas from them too. Yeah, um, too. I mean, they just they have so many people go out testing, pushing gear, and they realize okay, this stuff gets trashed, this doesn't get trashed, and and so they they figured it out. So no, it was great. It was a really good learning experience for me to. I picked up little tidbits from the gear they were they were renting out. Yeah, and I've I've always liked that idea of uh, you know packing your food by day, like you know Tuesday breakfast or or whatever. Like here's all your your Tuesday food. I've always liked that idea, but I've never done it. <laughs> yeah, everything just goes in the barrel, right? Now, because you never know what you're in the mood for to eat, right? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, really quick question here, uh, River King Brian who was on the show last week's asking, do you prefer tents or hammocks when you're uh, in the back country? I'm a tent guy. Uh, the one time, you know what? I got to try a hammock again. Um, I had a bad, it's just a terrible night's sleep. 
uh, in a hammock. One time I did, and I've just never gone back. But it, that wasn't a fair shake either that I gave it. So I'm just trigger shy on going out on a trip committed to a hammock when I know I'm perfectly happy in a tent, you know? Yeah. And so it's, I've thought about it a few times, but, but, uh, and actually James, the guy I was on the Clarny trip, he was, uh, he brought a hammock, not on that trip, but on another trip we did. And, and I looked at him a few times because he, the places he set up, I was like, Ooh, that looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Pete saying, Oh, we have to get that right. Yeah. You know what? I, I can honestly say it. Pete, Pete come up with a great uh, a great uh, uh term last week. And Pete, I never forgot it. He says you could either roll around in a tent or sleep in a hammock. Uh that's good. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Good. I, I love well, that saying. That's gonna stick with me for a while. But you know what? I, I'm a hammock I'm a hammock camper myself, and uh I can never ever ever go back to well, if I had to, I would, but I can never go back to a tent. Well, if you do, the trick is, and I, I it wasn't until I got one of those fat uh, mattresses. I mean, don't skimp on the sleeping mattress. I got, I forgot which one it was, mm -hmm. um, but what a difference it makes getting, and, and that is actually, it, it's very compact too. It rolls yeah. in, you pay a pretty penny for it, um, but... Yeah, makes a big difference. No, I, I'm keen. I'll tell you what, though. If I would live down in the southeast, where those guys are, you guys got some nasty critters around. <laughs> we don't have that <laughs> same type of stuff around. I would definitely think twice about sleeping on the ground. A hammock yeah. does make a lot more, makes more sense for that reason alone. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you honestly, Ken, you, you got to give it a try, but you have to, you have to give it a couple of days because you know what? There, there is a knack to it, but once you, once you find your position in there and, you'll get in my case anyways i get the best i i get the best night's sleep ever when i'm yeah. in the back country in a hammock i always tell the wife i'm gonna hang my hammock in my bedroom and she says why i said because i sleep better in a hammock than i do in my own bed at home no i, I gotta try who, need, who needs the 2800 mattress when i got a, a 250 dollar hammock that's way more comfortable right yeah uh, yeah but she won't let me hang it in the bedroom so <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> no no so what, what would you say are uh some of your your best backcountry adventures either in a kayak or in a canoe um best paddling adventures that you've had out there maybe a trip well you know what it's i hate to i mean the, the george river trip i talked about i love the north i love i mean being in the tundra i mean it's such a spectacular part of the world and I mean, we literally woke up to caribou crossing the river right in front of us, wow. catching and eating uh, uh, trout right, you know, right at camp. I mean, it's just a just an epic place. Um, and so that's definitely in the top three trips. And then the other one that it, it's almost cliche, but Grand Canyon, you know, the Grand Canyon is a magical place mm -hmm. um and i went when i i did a 21 day trip uh in the middle of the winter it was actually over christmas and new year's and it was cold <laughs> no wow. doubt about it we had about a foot at the at the put in we had a, about a foot of snow but absolutely unbelievable trip and and i had high expectations it's the grand canyon right you expect and so i expected to be a little bit underwhelmed a little bit let down not in the least i was blown away um so i i can't wait to go back there so those uh, those two are particularly memorable but and then i keep going back to killarney i mean i will keep going back to killarney um uh i'd say those are the oh multi-day adventures those are probably my favorite yeah, yeah. Any any place that you really have on the radar that you'd like to go, like, uh, and I'm even talking like, you know, maybe not even producing a video for the channel or or anything like that. Any any place that you'd like to go to, just to say, yeah, this is my getaway trip. No cameras, no. Gear. Yeah, number number but, one is Nahani, uh, okay. or the Firth, or Mountain, any of the rivers up, up, uh, uh, up north, and. Um, you know, I was so close. I was scheduled to go on on the Nahani 
uh, July 2020. And and then and that thing got in the way, right? Yeah, and so I, that was that was crushing for me because uh, it, it it's been on my buck is number one on my bucket list for for the, the longest time is the Nahani. Um, I, I feel I have a feeling it's going to be. I know I've worked it up a lot in my mind, and I feeling it's going to be a lot like uh, Grand Canyon, where uh, you know it will meet my high expectations. <laughs> yeah. Now, in a canoe or in a kayak? Is the canoe. Canoe. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why not a kayak? Ah, uh, gear. Yeah. I mean, I could I could go either way, but no, it, it that one. It just seems right to do it in a canoe. Right, right. Yeah. I don't know just why. For, just for the heritage and the nostalgia, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, I took. Um, I, I'm in, I'm interested in learning more about canoe tripping and and whitewater canoeing. I took a and actually did some videos about it. I took a whitewater canoeing course with a Madawaska Canoe Center last uh, summer. And that was a humbling experience, really? <laughs> uh, learning to do gates and everything. Well, just one paddle offside in whitewater and, and it, it's different and, uh, learning to roll a canoe. And that was, uh, I actually thought I like, I, I've literally rolled, I mean, probably 10,000 or more times in, in my life. So I figured, okay, how hard can it be? To roll a canoe it's just a different craft yeah to, to roll but yeah no i battled so for the first day i tried and, and struggled I was like okay gotta rethink this one <laughs> yeah. and it was uh the the uh steffi the uh the co-owner of mkc who was with us it was just one thing she said she just gave me one tip and i did it i was like oh my gosh and it, it was a perfect example of how that, you know, that just a one little piece of advice from yeah. someone who, if, who really knows can make such a difference. And it, she, she told me, and after that was like, oh, okay, I got it. Yeah. Steffi, Steffi from, uh, from, uh, MKC was on the show last year. Uh, and I told her, I said, I wanted to get up there in the summer and, uh, take a couple of whitewater canoeing courses, but, uh, kind of never come into fruition one because of COVID and a bunch of other things that went on through the summer, as everybody knows, but it's going to happen one day. It's definitely going to happen one day. I want to brush up on that whitewater skills for sure. Yeah. That's and, a great, such a great place to, to do it. I mean, they got it. Their, their operation is awesome. Yeah. Um, he eats so well. <laughs> and the That's river. I've right, heard that, I've right heard that from like numerous people. Yeah. Yeah. I worked there as a kayak instructor back in the day. Um, so I knew, yeah, I was very familiar with it, but uh, I'm, yeah, it was great to go back because I all the good memories of the good food and, and the river is it's a great learning river. So many little eddies and yeah. with the gates. And gates are something you don't find many places, but gates are incredible tools for practice and and for learning, for teaching, for all those things. It just it forces you to be precise and not just look at an eddy as this 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 big chunk of water it's it breaks things down where you have to hit a specific spot uh yeah. uh within the river it's it's a really cool learning to, uh, learning tool well they they have ideal conditions there too eh? with uh controlled water flow and stuff like that so yeah yeah and they they know the river and they know all the the nooks and crannies which is really cool yeah cool well you know what ken it's uh it's eight o'clock or just after eight o'clock i'd like to do the swag giveaway and then i put the uh the invitation up there on uh screen for anybody that uh, might like to come up and ask ken a question or two i see i've got stephen coots in the basement i'll be with you in a minute there stephen um yeah so i don't know if uh if you need to get yourself a beverage or something or i could leave you on screen or whatever oh you're you're well equipped are you he's got the cooler by his side here right? <laughs> I'm drinking, I'm drinking some white water, uh, white water and crew coffee tonight. So we're, we're doing good there. Uh, okay. Nice. So I'm going to get on with the swag giveaway. So for tonight's swag giveaway, which is uh, sponsored by, and let me do this. Do, 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 do. There's nothing like being out there for over 50 years. We've been connecting people with nature by building classic Canadian canoe designs using the best materials available. We built a reputation on durable, dependable canoes, that allow you to focus on what's important, whether that's unplugging in remote wilderness, spending quality time with your favorite people, or nailing the perfect line. 
Visit NovaCraft.com to find the perfect canoe for you and locate your nearest authorized dealer. Man, oh man, I really need to work on my segues <laughs> for announcing my sponsors. I'm going to have to rehearse that part. <laughs> Tonight's my giveaway. Uh, we've got uh, a few items. I'm actually going to do uh, two giveaways um, tonight, and everybody's going to have that opportunity. Uh, tonight's swag giveaway, first we're going to start out with some uh, swag from uh, Nova Craft Canoe. I've got one set of uh, things here, which is a, uh, a mug and a Nova Craft uh, camouflage baseball cap and then for the other packet we're going to have a nova craft baseball or uh winter toque with uh, a mug as well so that's going to be part of two prizes and each one will also receive uh in a, a canoe hound adventures prize pack which will have some decals and a couple of iron-on patches and then our friends over at algonquin outfitters i've got a couple of certificates for uh for that as well so uh it's going to be kind of a, a bunch of little items going and for tonight's swag giveaway what i need you to do is uh send your answers over to uh coas prize at gmail.com by saturday at 11 and tonight's question is ken is a past world champion in what paddle sport we've mentioned that about 50 times tonight haven't we <laughs> so i will leave this up on screen for a few minutes um just to uh, make sure everybody gets that chance. But like I say, please do send your answers to me by email at uh, coasprize at gmail.com. Please don't put the answers in the chat. Um, so everybody's on equal ground. Yeah, that, we'll leave it at that. Uh, there we go. So going to be some good prizes. I'll let the winner know Sunday, Monday, and uh, collect your information, and we'll get your prizes out to you. All right. Uh, Ken, we've got a couple people in the basement here that I'd like to bring up. We'll, uh, we'll start with Steven and then we'll get on with, uh, the next fella. I see you down there, but, uh, let's welcome Steven Coots to the live stream. How you doing, Steven? I'm in there. Hey, how you doing? I won't, I won't gush as much, but I'm a okay. fan. This is two weeks in a row here, for you. Uh, what's that? I'm sorry. This is two weeks in a row for you. Uh, something like that is terrible, eh? That's I'll, okay. I'll, You're welcome. I'll try and, I'll try and control myself. Yeah, I'm a subscriber. I love the your channel, Ken. And uh, I'm always picking up because I'm, in spite of the fact I'm wherever it says it, canoe polar, which is my focus um, as an instructor. But uh, I, I tell everybody, yeah, I got rid of my whitewater kayak 30 years ago. Nothing personal. You know, I live in Guelph. You know, I haven't got much. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, sea kayaker and so there's something to glean from everything. So it's wonderful. And I'm not going out and buying gear. I want somebody to tell me which stuff is good gear. So thank you. So I'm just pitching this to you. You, you probably never pulled a canoe, though. No. Yeah, should I try it. Anyways, I... so an idea for an episode. Yeah, I uh, guess you need the right, you need the right river. No? No. Uh, it just depends what you want to do. Like, uh, traditionally, it's always been part of canoeing since there's been canoeing thousands of years because rivers are two way highways, right? And, uh, and sometimes when your life, uh, indigenous families and groups and voyager and everything, we just roll down the rivers and dumping's part of it, possibly on a trip, but it wasn't for them. They could everything they owned in their lives depended on it so they would run like big rapids and control their descent with canoes and huh. we i had to, i had to qualify in on class three to be a, an advanced canoe polling yeah. instructor from Battle canada right we don't teach class three wow. but we teach class two in advanced but it's not like so there's a lot but also going upstream but i live in little guelph here where the there's no water we've got two rivers but I can use my rivers all year round if it's not frozen, even if it's six inches of water. And right. I can have an adventure with, there's a chunk of river going through town here that it drops like 50 feet in a kilometer. Wow. And it, it's six inches to a foot deep most of the time. And I go up and down it in an hour <laughs> and a half. No Holy problem. Cow. So That's, it's... It's an unbelievably powerful 
tool. And there's a lot of technique involved, though, obviously. But uh, And the Americans race, and they've been racing since the 1960s. So you're not aware of that. Go on YouTube and see them racing whitewater slalom. Four bar standing up in a canoe with a 12-foot stick. So just something. I'm just, it's not even a question. Just yeah. putting it out there because I've kind of left other um, canoeing instruction things, trying to bring canoe polling back as a as a tool a recognized tool more people in the back country because yeah. it always was as i always tell people before the 1980s it was in every canoeing manual it was there it just mm-hmm. kind of disappeared for no other reason my theory is that as you know um and i was really part of the new order of canoeing instructors i'm just the right age is that we learned at summer camps we learned from things like ORCA or from CRCA or Paddle Canada or whatever. And you're learning from um, canoeing recreationists. And canoeing recreationists didn't know anything about polling because they weren't working canoeists. And so all of a sudden, the new knowledge base for canoeing, polling disappeared. Had right. nothing to do with the fact it's not an unbelievable valuable tool and it's not hard when i was in new brunswick doing certifying as an instructor they told we gave us a group myself and this other guy two days we gave them introduction course to a group and then an intermediate course to the same group some of whom had never even been in a canoe before ever and the second well the first day we were going in current down a river and avoiding some rocks. The second day, we were doing some class one. Never been in a canoe, but standing with a 12-foot pole doing class one. It's that easy. So I'll have to to hook you two up, This might be a good episode for you. Just putting it out there. Thank you again, Dennis, for the opportunity. And of course, again, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Steve MK has got a, a YouTube fantastic. channel, uh, Canoe Polar, and you can check that out because yeah. he's got a lot of different YouTubing videos on it. Yeah. Thank cool. you. You can put me away. Okay. See you later, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know what? It's a, it's really an interesting thing. Uh, uh, Stephen was a guest on the show, I think, uh, early last season or in season one. And uh, the canoe polling is a, a dying art, right, for 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 canoeing type of thing. And he's trying to keep it re- revised. And you know what? I, I know of a few people that have actually done courses with him or been out just for, for day polling sessions with him. And, yeah. uh, well, you know, the guys from Paddling Adventures Radio. You ever met Sean and Derek? No. No? Okay. Well, they, they, they've got Paddling Adventures Radio. It's a podcast. And they, they've gone out with Stephen, and they absolutely loved it. So it's uh, something that's. Uh, oh, yeah. I can imagine it. It would be fun. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. And one of those yeah, things I, I that, could see me going ass over tea kettle though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be part of the fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh next guest that we have uh, to bring up on screen. Hey Pete, how you doing, buddy? Doing well. How's everybody over that way? Doing okay. Doing okay. There you go. You guys could plan your trip this summer. That's there right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see black. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Uh, you got me now. I got you now. How are you doing? Good deal. I'm doing well, man. It's good talking with you. Yeah. Uh, I've been Hopefully a fan see you a very long, soon. Long Was that? Yeah, we uh I had a busy week uh last week. My grandfather died and uh but the family's doing well. Uh we're all doing well moving forward. Uh and um family's really coming together there. So but um hopefully uh, the Wilson race will still be on this weekend and get a little bit of rain. Maybe they'll, uh, we'll do that. So I'm looking forward to getting out there and seeing everybody having a lot of fun with that. So that's what we got going on. Nice. Does that happen? Is that a, an annual thing? Yes. Yeah. They call it the go fast day over at Wilson Creek. Uh, they, I think they started it, um, as a memorial to, uh, someone in the community that, uh, I, I you know, we lost somehow. I'm not exactly sure how, but it's, uh, I think it's the Amy Begg Memorial Wilson Creek Go Fast Day. So it's fun, just kind of a low key race. It's more of a fun thing and 
you get a coffee cup like everything else if you win and, <laughs> and just see the who's who in the southeast so it's fun oh man i'm jealous We're, yeah. yeah it's gonna be a while before we can really think paddling here yeah actually i wanted to ask you when you look back at your time in the southeast what river do you miss the most or what what experience is it that you uh look most fondly on in your memories the green yeah uh yeah being living in Asheville, we would it would just be uh the run we would do we'd probably do it three times a week after work yeah. just go yeah. out and for a quick run uh and man that uh that river. River. And, oh it's uh, it's so beautiful and it's so unique and uh, i'll you know even when i had buddies that would come down and visit me while i was living down there and i i would always take them there so we had i you know i got some really memorable days with some of my best buds going down the green i'll yeah. never forget one time the first time i took like the guys i really learned to paddle with and we pushed our pushed each other to new levels i took them yeah. down took them down the green and there's um i've forgotten the name rapid tra i think it's rapid transit Oh, I, anyway, that's you can't see the rapid, but it's a substantial rock slide. It's probably about a yeah. 40, 50 foot rock slide, but you don't see it because there's a boulder at the top. You come right. Yeah, that's rapid them. transit. Yeah. That's rapid transit. Yeah. And so I just yeah. told the guys, oh, this one's, you know, it's like a little seven or eight rocks foot rock slide. Just stay right of center and, you know, and you're, you're good to go. And then one after, and I let them go ahead and one after the other, I could, I mean, they're a really good boater, so I didn't have to, I wouldn't do that with <laughs> anyone. Right. <laughs> and one after the other, I heard the, whoa, what the? <laughs> 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 There's a lot of yeah. cursing going on as they came around. Like, yeah. Oh my, here we go. <laughs> yeah. When I did uh, that, uh, I did it with Woody Callaway and right. his data was so fun to listen to. He, he would just get up there. All right, guys, this is going to be a bumpy ride just try to go right you can't get too far right and try to point straight <laughs> i was like sure that's really the long and short because you're not in control if you start getting out of control it's going to be crazy so you just it's just such a fun river the whole thing top to bottom that and the steepness of it does not come through on any camera i tried to let people no. the gopro fit just makes it look like a little one foot ledge but you can look back and see you know I think what is it two or three hundred feet a mile in some sections or something that's dropping through there so um yeah yeah that's a good place yeah yourself to miss that. yourself where, where where are you gonna take me what river are you gonna take me to hey, like i said in the comments when ken comes calling you go paddling so i mean wherever you want to go um, your pick you gotta choose oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, do you have a pretty good role <laughs> Just kidding. Oh man, yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out. And uh, you know, the green it pretty much is going to be running because it's the dam control. So if nothing else is out there, we'll do that. Or if something out is running and you want to go catch it, we'll definitely get on it. So it'll be fun. there. You go, Ken. If you if you still if you need that stunt double, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good deal. Oh, that's all right. Oh, yeah. look at that. With with Pete comes his good friend Brian. Look at that. Need that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, got to shut off your YouTube volume, Brian. Hey, everybody, how y'all doing? Doing well. Good. So, Ken, fun? you know, I understand ca ca canoes have your heart. My boy Pete, uh, short boats have his heart, and me, I am. I love that week long expedition paddle. Um. Just all different flavors. Canoe hound. We we gotta try to you in a short boat. We gotta see what your style is gonna be. <laughs> Sink yeah. or swim. So are you, Brian? <laughs> are you the one that drags Pete on those multi-day uh the long river trips? Oh oh no, yes. oh no. Pete drags me everywhere. <laughs> Usually kicking and screaming. <laughs> oh, so oh, here's a funny story with Brian. He followed me just about anywhere on these rivers, and uh, we did 
the entire French broad from uh, Rossman. I think it is where the forks come together all the way to Douglas Lake in Tennessee. And uh, section nine's in there. And so we had these 14 and a half foot touring boats. Brian is not a whitewater paddler. And I've always told him, you got to do whitewater with me. You got to do whitewater. And finally, we're in section nine. And you could see him like the color kind of left his face when he saw. I was like, it's just class three. We're okay. There may be something bigger at the end. They got this, um, as you I'm sure know, they got Frank Bells down there. But they're sneak routes. A brown kayakers legend, Frank Bell. So um, he had a meaningful swim up there in the ledges. We got him back together and uh, he crushed it after that. We get down to kayakers ledge. I'm going to take the ledge in this pre on Yukon. He's going around the island. We're supposed to meet back up after the island to look at Frank Bell's so we can scout it. He can make a decision. I'm going to send, we'll let him make a decision. When I get around the island, he's going around the next island already. There was no talk. I was like, Brian, maybe he thought I went ahead. So anyway, I ran the rapid. When we got back down together later, I was like, I thought we were going to talk about it. He said, Pete, I've run a lot of things with you. But when I heard Frank Bells, I knew there was no reason to run it. So it was um, it was pumping about three, a little more than 3,000 CFS that day. And you, you had the mist and all the volume. But um, yeah, he, he had no interest in that. But at the end of the trip... I could no longer say you need to run whitewater with me. He's run it just in a sea kayak. So it was, it was kind of funny. Four, yeah. 14 foot boat loaded. Loaded. Yes. He always tells me, he always tells me, man, you got to do whitewater. You got to do whitewater. And I tell him every single trip we go on is whitewater. <laughs> We're just doing it in sea kayaks. That's all. Yeah. 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 So I got to bring some kind of long boat down as well. I don't know. Right. Pete's oh, got yeah, about. Can, you know, uh, well, Pete's I got. I got boats, man. Oh yeah. yeah, I saw your garage. You got boats. You're good. Yeah, yeah. Pete. <laughs> Pete has a small collection, actually. Uh, with that being asked, there, uh, Double D was asking you, uh, Ken, uh, what boats do you have in your garage right now? Uh, none in the garage. Well, no, no. It's, well, actually, no, none in the garage. It's got. Uh, I'm, they're all in storage containers now. That they're. they're what I got a new. I need a new system. I totally need a new system. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, what do I have? I've got so many boats because of all the boat reviews I've been doing. Um, so I think I probably have now have something like fifty boats on hand. But wow, um, the ones that I active using are. Uh, I, I don't like. I'm not a big seller of boats. That's for sure. I like. I like, oh, I'm going to use this boat. Unless it's a boat like I'm never going to use. I'm like, I'll, I'll need this boat at some point. This. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never know. Let, let the vessel suit the trip, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's a hard question to answer just because I there's so many. Like, if, if I had to pare down my boats to, like, three or so, ooh, mm. I couldn't do that. No, sorry. I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a lot. That's a lot of plastic to hold on to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's too much. Like, yeah, I, I have yeah, literally those storage, yeah, like um uh what do you call those things? Those sea containers or yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sea containers. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. You guys in your kayaks, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I do have a canoe. I'll never get rid of it. What, yeah. Uh, what kind of canoe you got? It is a. Um, oh man, hold on. I don't know. I, <laughs> my neighbor gave it to me. It's a pretty lightweight. Uh, it'll come to me soon. I'm not thinking about it. But it's a lightweight plastic canoe. Uh, it's pretty pretty solid and uh, pretty wide and stable. So when I want to throw the kids and the wife and and then maybe the dog in there and just all do something fun together, that's that's the vehicle of choice for sure. Yeah, Ken. Do you, do you have any? Uh, do you have sponsors or uh, affiliations with uh, any any companies that you'd like to acknowledge? I mean, yeah. Like I try, I I walk a, a fine line. I have sponsors of my t the TV show, the inspirational series, like the Paddle Tales and the Facing Wave series that I do, uh, but not for any of the other content, just because it's I want to keep it on you know, unbiased and, mm -hmm. and not affiliated. So, but I have, I have long-term 
partnerships with um, with Aquabound and uh, NRS uh, and Track Kayaks uh, have sponsored a number of episodes, like a number of my Facing Waves episodes for, yeah, for like a long time as well. They actually, uh, they gave me a kayak. That was when they first came out with them 15 years ago or so. Um, they knew I was a whitewater kayaker getting into sea kayak and they're like, that's the kind of thing we want. This boat with, you know, cause I don't know if you've seen it before. It's a kayak that, uh, that you can change the rock or a sea kayak, you can change the rock on so you can make it really playful. Um, and really cool for a sea kayak. You can take into surf, you can take, and I've taken into big surf. I've run the, the, the Ottawa river in it. I pushed it. They gave me the kayak anyway, going back to where, what I was originally saying, they gave me a kayak 15 years ago before they'd launched the company and said, break it, <laughs> you know, do whatever you need to do. Mm-hmm. You know, you think you need to do it. And uh, I actually gave us two myself and my, my business partner who also, he, uh, he's a, a phenomenal paddler and we just beat the crap out of them. We ran the waterfalls in them. We did, we were pushing them. And finally I did break it to a little, to a small degree, but, um, Anyway, ever since then, I've been not surprisingly a fan of their <laughs> of their products. <laughs> they could hold up to that. Um, and what was yeah, that called? That's called a track. T R A K. Um, yes, I remember seeing those. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but Aquabound and NRS I've worked with for for a very long time, and and uh, they've been they've been great partners. Cool. Very good. Yeah, it never never hurts to acknowledge your uh, your sponsors, right? So <laughs> that's yeah, all right. For sure. Um, so what, what can you what can you tell us about uh, uh, facing waves? Uh, what what what's the program about? And you're what in your eighth or ninth season with that? Ninth now, season, right? yeah. Ninth it's, season, yeah. It's yeah. It's funny because I mean, the, it really hasn't the, the paddling industry doesn't really know about it. Uh, because it hasn't been targeted to the paddling industry. The whole idea of facing waves was to uh, to reach the non-paddling, the non-paddlers to, to inspire them to get into paddling. And that's really what TV is great for, is it just goes, you can just get it into so many households and people that never would have thought of paddling, but they're on a channel that is outdoors oriented. They, they're like, oh, okay. Hey, wow, this looks really cool. Um, I, I got to try that someday. And, and so that was the, uh, was the idea from the beginning with, with facing waves was, um, to create inspirational paddling content. And then to be honest, an excuse to go on awesome paddling trips, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> um, which it has been. And there was a number of years where I wasn't the host. I was, I was the host for a bit and then I got out of it because the business started taking too much of my time. But then that's when I also was like, hold on a second. What am I doing? Um, the reason I started the business was to do more of this. And so, uh, I, so I, you know, got back into the host role for that, for that show. But yeah, the, the premises uh, of the show is uh, showcasing the world's top paddling destinations. Um, and okay. the, the focus of the past two years has really been because of, out of necessity, uh, domestic travel i've been i uh, the past two seasons have really been one i just hit quebec and pretty much did a full tour quebec's huge well yeah. you know huge province so much to do there it's crazy how much there is uh to do there and then last season it was ontario and the same thing There's so much in ontario but this year i'm finally getting to uh to to stretch <laughs> the wings yeah. a little bit more with a trip down south and the BVIs next month, um, and hopefully a lot more in the fall. Okay, so the show is more focused on destination rather than particular canoeing or kayaking or paddle boarding or whatever it might be, right? Exactly, whatever whatever is the the right vehicle for right. the destination for the adventure. And where where can people find this program? It's on uh, Outside TV uh, or uh, Bally, Bally, Bally Sports, which was Fox Sports. It's now Bally Sports. Um, it's just getting on to PBS um, over the next, uh, it takes a process to to in, get 
into the system. So it'll it'll be rolling out through there soon. Um, those are the best places. Um, and then, but, beyond, but the best way to see the content really is uh, what I'm doing on Paddle TV. Because I, we, I was mentioning before, we repurpose. Now we're doing it the opposite way. We're creating the content as Paddle Tales episodes, which is um, which we're releasing on the on the YouTube channel on Paddle TV YouTube channel, and then we're repackaging them, re-editing them as TV episodes uh, afterwards. So. Really, Paddle TV is the best place for for paddlers um, who may not have cable to see the uh, to see the content. And it truthfully, it'll probably come out. It will come out first from now on on Paddle TV, second through TV. Cool, cool. Yeah, I, I noticed a few episodes are on uh, on Paddle TV. So I got some I got some catching up to do because you got how many seasons worth on Paddle TV right now? Uh, I think we've just put the past two seasons, the Quebec and the Ontario road trips. Okay. Um, not all the archive. Is there a place where they could see the archive stuff, though? That I, stuff could be gold. Not online. <laughs> yeah. Not online, yeah. It, it, I'll put that on the, the list of things yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's going to take paddling time away. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. Oh, isn't that what you have employees for? <laughs> I'm going to play. Put it up, would you? That's cool. So now you you also cover on your on Paddle TV. You also cover a lot of um, reviews, product reviews, different uh, varying things. Everything from paddles to uh, I've seen episodes on there about maintaining wet wetsuits. How much research is actually going into all this all this stuff? Like you have obviously a knowledge of your wetsuits. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've having paddled now for 30 over 30 years and and not just passively paddled for 30 years, been a pretty aggressive uh, paddler. Uh, a lot of stuff is, you know, I've just picked up and have, have learned through practice and, and just just being in the industry, you just have learned. But at the same time, that's not enough. I mean, so anytime I do a, a something like that I'll I'll do research and and find out what the companies are saying to do and make sure that I'm touching those key points not saying something wrong giving the wrong advice um but uh yeah it's I mean it's paddling has really been it played such an enormous role in my <laughs> the better part of my life that it actually kind of feels really nice to uh, to put the the knowledge that is is amassed in here to actually to use to get it out right. there uh, on a, on a bigger level. I, I always loved doing that when I was teaching uh, direct teaching with people, but you know that's the cool thing about about YouTube is being able to share it with so many more. So, yeah. uh, Gateway Brown's wondering, he's uh, what's the different biggest difference between a YouTube edit and a TV edit? Uh, hey, Gatewood, we haven't actually met, but we will because I love his videos. I don't know if you guys have seen his, yeah, stuff. yeah, he was on the show briefly last week with the boys down here. Yeah. Oh, right on, he, yeah, keep doing what you're doing, Gatewood. <laughs> love <laughs> it. Um, um not a big difference to be honest uh it's timing it has to whereas for youtube it can be any length for tv it has to be 22 minutes um for a 30 minute episode it has to be 22 minutes on the nose and with uh, a certain amount of time specific amount of time for commercial breaks um well that allows for the commercial breaks and it has to audio levels and color levels have to be broadcast standards but otherwise um it's pretty pretty straightforward it's timing timing's the challenge mm -hmm. you, you mentioned earlier that you have people who, who do all that stuff but do you have editing experience yourself do you uh do you take care of any edit edit Yourself. Yeah, I used to, yeah, I used to be very involved with editing. I love editing. I love filming. I love all, but I don't love any one of them enough to do it full on. <laughs> I love variety. <laughs> yeah. 
<clears throat> so uh, I, every once in a while, I'll usually take an episode every year and just, just to more as a passion project, just to, and to keep my, you know, keep, uh, keep current with it, keep up, up to date with editing. I'll, I'll usually take an episode a year and I enjoy it, but no, I don't have too much time to edit, especially, you know, I, I prefer to be outdoors and filming. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you get out often without a camera though? Yeah, that yeah. morning leisure paddle. That yeah, that's usually family. Yeah, it's you know, yeah, it's usually family uh, driven. Um, we get out a fair bit, but not. Uh, I'd say probably three quarters of my the time I go out now is filming, but that other quarter is is also it, it's. It's magical. <laughs> it's magical time with, with my daughter and with my wife and daughter and all our friends. We have so many people here that, uh, families that, that love going are always game to go too. So, but yeah, when I have time these days, because I do so much filming, I'm on the water already so much. To be honest, I uh, will usually go for a, a, a mountain bike rip. Um, I love love mountain biking, and yeah. I can. It's really easy to go for right here where I live for a 45 minute hour long mountain bike ride at lunchtime and paddling's harder yeah. that way. It's hard to do a 45 minute paddle. Um, and you can, but, um, yeah, if I need to get act to get exercise, to get the heart pumping and, uh, you know, it, mountain biking is just easier for me to do. Right. And what do you, what do you do during the hard water season here? What, uh, what keeps you busy in the wintertime? Well, normal years, hockey, of course. Yeah, okay. Oh, you, know, you play? Or... <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Play, uh, usually play two or three times a week, but uh, it's downhill skiing, cross country skiing, snowshoeing. Um, pretty much it's it's a mandate that we get out and do something every day, um, whether it's uh, just for half an hour at lunch, go for a quick snowshoe or a cross country ski or. Um, fat biking i've been doing a lot more fat biking the past couple of years too yeah. um but i mean we, we just that's why we live where we live you know and this small town is the literally I, I if it wasn't dark right now i could see a trail system right out the back so i can i can literally just hop out and and go for a rip mm -hmm. pete last week when we were we were chatting about you coming north I never even thought about the Ottawa Valley. Perfect place for you to go up there and cut your teeth in some Canadian yes. white water. Yeah, yeah, that would be fantastic. I uh, I talked briefly with uh, Seth Ashworth from up in that way. Uh, oh, right on. Time and and uh, we were loosely talking about maybe getting up there and doing something with him, but then COVID shot that down. So um, I love Canada. I just, you know, it's been weird the last couple of years not being able to get up there with with the desire to, we just can't, but, uh, I definitely want to get on the auto. That's for sure. Come on. I don't think there's a yeah. I'm, I'm coming. I'm well, coming. Pete, as soon we, as I can, I'm there. We, Pete, we know where we can get you a couple kayaks to use. All you need to do is cling to the bottom <laughs> of a, a train crossing over Niagara Falls or something. If you're, you got those magnetic fingertips to hold on, right. And just come across the bridge. <laughs> Yeah, there you I'll go. tell you what, Brian, a little payback when he comes up here. I'm going to throw him in a 14-foot boat loaded with gear and say, have fun on the Ottawa. <laughs> no paddle, mate. <laughs> yeah. He does it to me all the time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, so Ken, what can we expect from uh, Paddling TV here in the uh, near future? We got anything uh, coming down the pipeline right now? Uh, a lot of the uh, same, like – the kind of content that I'm, I have the that's doing well and I'm having the most fun with is the gear reviews, uh, tips and, uh, and the inspirational con the, the paddling, the paddling adventures, the paddle tales. So, uh, yeah, basically doing a lot more of that. Um, and as, as soon as possible, I've, I, I did some filming at the end of the season last year and so i've got a few videos that i'm releasing over the next little bit uh month or month and a half from end of the season but i gotta hit the road get somewhere i can paddle pretty soon here to start making yeah. new content um but it'll be yeah i've got a 
ton of kayaks. I've been uh, uh, trying, well, really working with as many kayak companies as I can to get them to send boats um, for reviews. And uh, got a lot of kayaks already that have come up for reviews. So just need the, the weather to turn. Cool. Cool. So I just posted a comment there that we'll take about 10 quick questions uh, to close the show out. And we've got a couple drifting in here now. So we'll start covering a couple of them. And let's see your double D's asking best paddling partner. And why? Oh, that has to be uh, my daughter right now. She's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a loaded question. Thanks. Double D. Yeah. <laughs> not there. And I've got to only have one child as well. Cause then I, it's still, I would have been screwed. Um, but no, she's, <laughs> She's at that age where she's still, she's just a sponge. She's learning so quick and, and uh, gets the biggest smiles because she's doing new things for the first time. Like just this fall, she surfed a real wave, not a little baby wave, a real wave uh, for the first time. And her eyes just lit up and she looked at me in the eddy, who just smiled, just like, oh my God. And then uh, and these these little victor, watching her go through those moments is, is just awesome cool yeah. awesome uh canadians asking what do you consider the best tip for new paddlers best tip for new paddlers um hmm. well i think the best tip would be to it depends what type of paddling you're doing too if it's what but even any type of paddling just don't push it too much uh one bad experience when the problem the great thing about paddling is that things typically don't go really that wrong but the bad thing about paddling is when things do go wrong they have a ten they can go very very wrong and you know so I almost stopped paddling because of one of those moments back when in my earlier when I was a teen and it wasn't really paddling. It was doing something really stupid, which was we would as dumb teens as something a dumb teen would do ignorant teen. Not that all teens are ignorant, but that I was at the time we'd, we would jump into Ottawa River whirlpools, which are big to get downtime. And Pete's loving that I got just, I got too much downtime and, uh, <laughs> and make that we'll make it all that will just end the story there. But, and it, it, it almost completely ended my, my paddling, uh, career. Um, well, <laughs> more than that, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's just, uh, take it slow and don't, um, don't push too hard because if if things go wrong, they go real wrong. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, this one here, I'm not sure if I'm reading it right, but do you recommend that I don't bubble wrap and get back into whitewater kayaking? Yeah, you know, whitewater kayaking, it has a bad rap for being just, just for the extreme, but... You know, it's like any other sport. You can push it as far as you want and you can make it as chill as you want. I mean, you can't make it as chill as flat water paddling, but you can make it pretty chill if you stick to reasonable water, reasonable water levels. You don't, it doesn't need to be this terrifying and the type of boat you're using. It doesn't need to be a terrifying experience. Like even if it is, feels a bit too much in a whitewater kayak, taking out an inflatable, uh, a whitewater inflatable kayak um, that sit on top, extremely stable. I mean, there's ways of having that whitewater experience of edging your way into it if if you're nervous about it. You don't have to just dump, jump right in, put on a skirt and a helmet and be worried about flipping and being trapped in a boat and hitting your head and, and all that stuff that people worry about. It doesn't need to be that experience. You can, you can work your way up. Baby steps, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gatewood's asking, of the 50 kayaks you have, any particular standouts? Um, yeah, like, uh, well, for, for Whitewater right now, 
I my main whitewater boat that I've been paddling for like 10 years now, and this is going to date me a bit, is is like they don't even make it anymore. It's the Jackson Kayak for fun. And it, the reason I use it because it's just a great all round boat for me. It's very playful and it's comfortable. And that has become such a huge uh, <laughs> requirement of any boat that I'm in these days. It used to be performance. Now it's performance, but comfort. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I've started using the, uh, it's not as playful, but the Jackson Kayak Antics. Um, it's more of a river runner. And the new Antics 2.0, which I literally just uh, just tested recently, haven't released yet, released it yet, but it's got a more playful hull on it. And I, I'm really liking that one. Um, the, I tested a, a sea kayak this, uh, past summer fall, which was the P and H Virgo, um, which I really liked. It's just a playful sea kayak. I used it in the, in, on the Ottawa and just, so it, it could handle big white water, but it was great on the flat water too. Just a playful boat. I, you know, that's what I like. I like boats that are that have performance that that are playful then put a smile on your face um so those two stand out um i'm really i want to try some more high performance kayaks this year some of the more recent ones for that reason even though they may not be the best ones for entry level paddlers to to use but for my selfish purposes <laughs> selfish reasons i want to try a few more higher performance boats that are comfortable. Sure. All righty. I think we got one last one here. Uh, Andre's asking uh, any recommendations for a sitting kayak for a seven-year-old looking to transition from a sit on top? Um, would that, and I assume that's flat water. Andre, can you put a one in there if it's for flat water? Uh, it's, well, assuming it is for flat water, uh, a sin do they do they make okay yeah well do they make sit on tops for for white water or are they they primarily flat water um yeah uh, not really not either for seven -year -old. not for no not for a seven year old there are not many choices for white water for a seven year old my daughter used the, the this jackson kayak fun one fun 1.5 she was in this year and um she'll probably outgrow that and I'm not sure what we're going to get her into, but for flat water, geez, you really, there aren't that many choices for kids. And I, I hate to, I don't have a good answer for you. Maybe um, a tsunami SP. I had Pete in that for a while. It did pretty well. Yeah. Um, for flat water. Yeah. That, what is that? Like a 12? Uh, 12 and a half? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think somewhere around twelve. But it's real. It's a narrow beam right there on the hips, so it can it kind of yeah. attaches to the kids. So yeah, I, Andre's well. after a flat water canoe. Yeah, yeah. No, that sounds about right. Like the, the, the I haven't tried that one. I haven't even tried the tsunami at all yet. Um, but uh, there are a few, a number of models that are the that have that small, medium, and large version and. I think that's probably the the only because I can't think of a kid specific sit inside a uh, flat yeah. water kayak. So that might be that it. That is for a kid. Yeah. That is an, a, an adult of any sort could not get into it. Oh, uh, it <laughs> it's, Perfect, it's a yeah. SP is for the small paddler, and uh, like my both my kids have had one, and it, and it does really well for for. A All right, paddler. there you go. There you go. Ask the professionals. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, we're uh, we're drawn to the end of the show here. Um, you know what? It's uh, quite quite enlightening. Uh, I recommend that anybody in the chat that's never been to uh, watch Paddle TV on YouTube to go over and give it a look. Uh, I know we did a lot of talking about kayaking and stuff, but there is a lot of coverage on there of canoeing and uh, some stand-up paddleboard and uh, other variations of paddling and reviews and uh, all kinds of neat stuff like that. So there's quite quite a bit of uh, content on there that uh, might light up a lot of people's lives, so to say, <laughs> right? So, uh, yeah, so... Um, what what I know I asked earlier what's coming down the pipe from paddling TV, but do you have anything that's going to be launching in the next couple of days? 
because I, I noticed you got a fairly regular schedule. So, yeah, uh, we're not too much in the winter. It's it's happening every two weeks right at the moment, but right. um, it'll pick up more. The next one is actually uh, what I did was I was like, uh, you mentioned the super cheap kayaks that are on the market. So I I uh, at the end of the season last year, I went to Amazon and I was like, OK, what's the absolute cheapest kayak? That I can buy, and that bought. I was like, okay, this is it, and I bought the the Intex K1 Challenger, and uh, it's actually crazy. It has like twenty thousand reviews, and they're all like its average rating is four point eight or something out of five. And it's like, holy cow! Like for, I mean, this boat cost me. It was I bought it for a hundred and seventy Canadian dollars. So what's that? A hundred and like. 30 us dollars and it came with a pump and a paddle wow yeah and i was and so i i was curious for sure i was like okay is this thing a pool toy <laughs> yeah <laughs> or yeah. uh and just a bad idea or um or is there actually a place for it and uh well, I'm not going to answer that question right now. I can <laughs> watch the video, video when it comes out. There you go. <laughs> is that is that a that's an inflatable? Obviously. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I never. We never even touched on inflatable kayaks, did we? No. 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 But you know, else we didn't touch on too. Actually, was uh, and uh, answering Gatewood's question before another boat that I would really would be hard pressed to to let go, which um, I ha don't have yet, but I'm going to have soon from Swift is a pack boat um because right. i used it in killarney and uh it was i mean those boats are uh, those are amazing they're just a hybrid of canoe and kayak yeah. and and that boat in particular is crazy light it's like 20 i don't even know 25 pounds or something i it's absurdly light but uh fun to paddle yeah i uh I, I also have a swift pack boat. Uh, <laughs> uh, Novacraft is well aware. I've got I've got two vessels. One one's a Novacraft 16 foot prospector. The other one's a 14 foot swift pack boat. Uh, the prospector version as well. And it's uh, they they are they are truly a pleasure to paddle. They're they're a very nice vessel. Uh, yeah. With the double blade, it's got the kayak seat in it and stuff like that. So it's it's its own it's its own style boat in its own right. But uh, yeah, by all means, they're a nice paddle for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They have a lot to choose from too as well. So yeah. Yeah. You got to save up, save up for them. That's for sure. They don't come cheap, but none of them do anymore. You know what? <laughs> the, the days of getting a really nice canoe for uh, the $2,000 mark, uh, they're long gone. Yeah. They're long gone, uh, especially with this whole uh, pandemic thing that we got going on. Eh? The, the value of any outdoor craft is just, skyrocketed right so if you're if you're fortunate enough to find the deals you know may, maybe ken whitting will be having a uh a kayak uh <laughs> yard so sale much. one day soon mm -hmm. let me know i'll put it on the show here i'll let everybody <laughs> know for you ken uh, great great way to supplement the uh retirement right yeah yeah especially at the value they're uh they're going for right now so well that's awesome man uh you know what i, I really appreciate you popping on the show with us tonight um you know that this show happened really quick for us and uh, I'm really glad to uh, finally meet your acquaintance here virtually. And uh, maybe yeah, one day guys. we'll get to shake hands at a, a show or something. Do you yeah, do any of the show circuit? Uh, not a ton. Not the local one. But I'll be going to the the the, the bigger ones, the big gear show and the outdoor and outdoor retailer. And um, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, because well, you, oh, Ottawa way, you've got the Ottawa outdoor show, right? Yeah. I'll probably be on, end up being on the road when that happens. I'll probably be down Pete's way at that point. Right. Cool. But um, but if I am, I, who knows? Who knows? I don't. It's hard to plan too much in advance these days, based on especially around shows. You never know what shows are going to happen, and and yeah, mm. yeah, this is true. Well, well you know what? If you two do get together, I'm really looking forward to watching the collaboration videos on that. Be right. cool to see both uh, both points of view or. Both yeah. uh, videos coming from two different directions, so that'd be awesome. Pete, thanks for jumping on. Brian, if you're still in the chat, thanks for jumping in, as well as yeah. uh, uh, Stephen Coots. Thanks very much for uh, coming up and asking a question. 
gents, I'm just going to drop you into the basement and uh, close the show out, and I'll see you in about two minutes. Thanks again, Thank Ken. You. Appreciate it. Awesome. All right, everybody. Hopefully, everybody enjoyed uh, tonight's show. Uh, like I said, uh, all the information for uh, Paddle TV and uh, Ken's um, Instagram and Facebook are also in the description below. So, by all means, give it a uh, go over there, check it out. Uh, he's already got like eighty-eight thousand subscribers, which is a good thing, and uh, it means that uh, he's obviously got a good channel. Uh, just wanted to also thank everybody uh, once again. I know I mentioned it last week, but uh, last week with everybody's help. Uh, we finally hit over that 5,000 subscriber mark here on Canoe Hound Adventures, and that's a, a rather large milestone for me. So I'm very happy and proud to say that I'm finally uh, made the 5K, and uh, that's awesome. I appreciate everybody's support, and uh, thank you. Just thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, just wanted to say that uh, for next week's show, um, we had a cancellation. Uh, we had somebody book for next week's show, trying to fill that up. If uh, if we do, we'll have a show. If not, maybe we might not have a show. But if we don't have a show, we'll be back the week after. But uh, if you want to stay in touch with what's going on there, by all means, follow us on Facebook at Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show, and you'll know exactly what's going on. I, I promise I'll keep everybody up to date. Um, for anybody that's uh, become a channel member tonight, please do drop me an email at canoehound at gmail.com. That way there I can get your uh, your perks all started by getting your membership decals out and stuff like that. For those of you that might be interested in becoming a channel member, for only 13 cents a day, you can help support the channel, help these broadcasts come to you, um, you know, with uh, offsetting costs and stuff like that for all the streaming software and all the equipment and everything that has to go into this. Be greatly appreciated. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please do hit the thumbs up. And more importantly, if you enjoyed the show, really enjoyed the show, Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification and you will be notified on each episode that is coming up. With that being said, uh, just remember my name is Dennis at Canoe Hound Adventures and I urge you all to please keep the adventures alive. Have a great week.